So, we finally have a confirmed date for when the Sony A7S II successor is going to be announced. Mark on your calendar, 28th of July. The internet is going crazy and losing their minds in anticipation of this mythological camera that is the A7S III. Is it going to be worth the wait? For now, we only know this, some of the specs. Rumored specs, that is. So, without any further ado, let's go over some of the rumored specs and what the A7S III could end up being. Let's talk about it. So, the Sony A7S II finally has gotten a confirmed date, so it's going to be announced on the 28th of July. I'm already right here on Sony Alpha Rumors, of course, my favorite site in the world. So, they have confirmed, Sony confirmed our rumor, Sony A7S III will be announced on July 28th. So, they have finally confirmed it, uh, it's going to be announced on, on the 28th of July, the A7S II successor. Like I said in the beginning, uh, we still don't know what this camera truly is gonna be. We only know some of the room, some of the specs, or should I say, we only have some rumored specs. So this might uh, might might end up being true or not. We still don't know. So uh, for the sensor, uh, they're saying it's gonna have a 12 megapixel sensor with fast readout. Now. Uh, sp some of the rumors have also a point pointed for this sensor being a, a quad buyer sensor, uh, but uh, now they're saying that Sony, I think, has disabled the the quad pixel design, so it's no longer going to be able to go up to 48 megapixels, I believe it was. So if that's the case, then that's kind of disappointing because that means this camera is not going to be truly ideal for for the hybrid shooters and people who want to do photo because. 12 megapixels is too low for photography in my opinion. Sure it's gonna be very awesome for low light, but again people uh, want a hybrid camera that does both good video and good photography. So if this if we, they're not using the quad bayer design or or if in this case if they're disabling the the quad bayer design just to have this camera be video centric only, that really sucks in my opinion. If you have the technology Sony, why don't you put it all in, in, in this camera? I really don't know. Uh, next for the recording uh, and video specs, we have uh, Full HD up to 240 frames per second. Now this is pretty good. Um, one of the cameras that I know has this is the Panasonic GH5S, also has Full HD 240 frames per second. But it's kind of softer, it's not really that sharp as, uh, as 4K and stuff. So we still don't know if this is going to be sharp. But it's still nice that it's gonna have that because not even the Canons have that. The Canons cap out at uh, 1080p 120. So if this camera records 240 frames per second in full HD, that's gonna be very awesome for the uh, for slow motion and slow down video. Next, it's gonna have 4K 120 frames per second, 10 bit 422, and 4K 120 frames per second raw over HDMI. Now, this if this is true, that's gonna be awesome. I have said many times that I don't really care for 4K, but I do understand that there are a lot of people who, who shoot in 4K and having the ability to go up to 120 frames per second is going to be awesome because you're going to be able to slow down the footage in 4K, so you're going to have still a lot of resolution. Now, they're saying it's going to have 10 bit 4 2 uh, Now, if, the, if that's true, it's going to be the first uh, alpha camera from Sony with 10 bit. I really hope it's true because Sony at this stage of the at this stage of the competition they really need to to come out with the camera with 10 bit because everyone now is coming out with 10 bit cameras except Olympus but then again they they suck for for video so yeah let's not even get into that so if Sony finally de delivers a 10 bit camera that's going to be very awesome i really hope it's 10 bits also for Choo Choo okay again this is going to be a first for an alpha camera i really hope this turns out to be true and uh, for the, the 4K 120 frames per second RAW over HDMI, now, as far as I know, there's no external recorder available right now that uh, that supports this 4K 120. So, uh, Atomos or other, other companies gonna have to come out with uh, a new recorder that allows for this. I believe HDMI 2.1 has support for 4K 120, I believe. So, uh, if this is true, it's gonna have to. It's there's gonna have. There's gonna need to have. Uh, there's gonna need to be a new recorder from Atomos or another company to allow for this. Now raw over HDMI. 
So that means this camera is not gonna have internal RAW. Now that kind of sucks. I wish it had internal RAW because there, there are some cameras like the Blackmagic for example which have RAW internal. That's really awesome but, but still even if it's external only that's still better than not having RAW at all. So yeah there's that. Next it's gonna it's saying it's gonna rumored to have 600 megabytes per second bit rates. Now that's gonna be huge, that's gonna be huge upgrade. Uh, I believe the um, the the Sony 7 III, for example, only has 100 megabytes per second or something like that. So if this camera really records in 600 megabytes per second, that's gonna be more than double. So let's hope let's hope this is really true because that's gonna allow for the for awesome quality. Now, as far as the file sizes go, that means the the file sizes are probably gonna be huge, but. If this camera has X265, for example, that's going to be able to, re to, to, to reduce the size, so let's hope for that. Uh, next, it's going to rumor to have base ISO 460 for S Log 3. Okay, so this camera is, of course, going to be targeted for the low light shooting. So, as far as ISO goes, I don't, I don't really have a problem with this because I know it's going to be a low light monster, just like the A7S2. But let's hope they can really improve on the low light because the A7 III. For example, as high resolution as the A7S 2 and it's almost the same in terms of low light quality and ISO performance. So let's hope this camera has much better low light than the A7S 2 because if it's if it only has 12 megapixels, it better make up for it in the low light department. So it's not gonna have dual dual uh, ISO. Now this was rumored uh, at first. To, this camera was rumored to have dual native no uh, dual native ISO, but now they think it's not gonna have dual native ISO. Now this is kind of uh, 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 a bad thing because the Panasonic GH5X for example and the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema 4K and the 6K have dual native ISO. This is pretty awesome because this camera being more targeted to low light shooting. If, uh, if, it, if, it, if it has or dual native ISO you can uh, increase the ISO and still regain a lot of quality. So it, it kind of works um, just like the name says to dual, dual ISO. So, the, the dual native ISO, the second ISO pretty much works just like the base ISO, so you're not going to have any noise whatsoever. So if this camera does not have dual native ISO, that's going to be that's gonna be a little sucky because the A7S2 and the A7S1 do not have this. So this camera really to be a low light monster, it really needs to, to improve on that. So let's hope for a dual native ISO, but for the time being, it, it's, it's looking like it's not going to have dual native ISO. Next, for the max ISO, I believe it's the same, so it's 409,600. Now, this might, this might seem like a lot, but uh, the Nikon D5, for example, this the D6 and the Canon 1DX cameras have over 1 million ISO. I said, same, same for the Nikon D500, so yeah, it, for, the, for the, the numbers only, it's not really that impressive, but then again, it's not the, the numbers only that determine the, the low light ISO. So this camera caps out at 409,600. Now, first of all, most people will, ne will never shoot at, at, uh, at this high of a number. And then you also have to factor in that just because uh, cameras like the Nikons and the Canons that I said have uh, over 1 million ISO, that doesn't mean they're better because at those values they're going to be very noisy. So this camera, although it only, cap it only goes to 409,600, it could be a lot better than those cameras from Nikon and, 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 uh, and Canon. So, Again, the numbers do not mean anything. So, this camera, I, I believe it's going to be a low light monster. It's going, it's, it's most likely going to be the new low light king, just like the A7S2 was. Next, we have uh, now. This is very, very impressive. If this is true, it, they're saying right here it's going to have 16-bit raw output. So I'm guessing over HDMI. Now, this is going to be huge if true because 16-bit uh, video. Uh, I don't know. I don't know if any cameras uh, at this price point. Uh, have the 16 bit. I know the Black Magic have 14 bit raw, uh, but 16 bit. I don't know. I don't even think the the Z cams have that. So if this camera has 16 bit raw video, that's gonna be huge. That's gonna be super super impressive. <laughs> so the, that's gonna be a lot of quality. So let's hope it really does this because for those people that like to shoot raw and stuff, and for professional production videos, this is gonna be huge. Let's hope for let's hope for the for the best. Next, uh, Sony claims 15 stops of dynamic range. Okay, so uh, this uh, I don't know uh, if if they if if it's really going to be 15 stops because most of the time when companies specify the stops in dynamic range, 
it turns out not to be the the specific the specified value. Um, I don't know. I don't know if this. I don't know how much the Sony, the current Sony Alpha cameras have in terms of dynamic range. I think they have like thir 12 to 13, I believe. I, I don't think they reach 14. So 15 cells of dynamic range. That's, that's gonna be that's gonna be great. That's gonna be more than enough for me. For people like me who don't do a lot of color, don't do color grading in post and stuff like that. This is gonna be pretty much overkill. But of course, for those people that do a lot of uh, grading in post and want to edit the, the footage having a lot of dynamic range really helps out because sony cameras for example are known to have a lot of uh highlight clipping so they're not really that great in recovering highlights especially compared to um panasonic for example even smartphones I, i've seen comparison with with the iphones for example the iphones uh in terms of highlight are a lot better than the Sony's, so the, the, problem, the biggest problem in my opinion with Sony's in terms of dynamic range is really the, the highlights. F to recover the highlights in Sony is really hard, they, they tend to overexpose the highlights a lot, so let's hope they finally address that, those problems. Next we have the EVF resolution, so it's rumored to have the, the world's highest resolution at 9.44 million dot EVF, so it's pretty much going to be Quad HD, aka 1440p quality resolution. Now. The, the, I don't know if this is going to be truly 9.44 million because they're saying here dots, so it's not really uh, the, the pixels, they're not specifying the pixels, so it's most likely going to be closer to, to 6 million, so yeah. Now, uh, I don't know why they, they're emphasizing so much in the EVF because this being a video centric camera, most people will not be using the EVF at all, they're most likely going to be, or, or should I say, they will, they will most mostly be using the, the LCD screen, so that's really what needs to be improved in this camera because the LCD screens from Sony really suck in terms of uh, quality and stuff, so I don't know why they're, they're making so much out of this because the EVF, like I said, is not really that used in video, but again, if, the, if it's really this great, then that's going to be a plus, of course, but then again, if this camera does not really have the quad bear design uh, system in the sensor, I don't know if it's going to be that worth it to have this much EVF, if, you, if it's not going to be optimized for the photography of the camera, so I don't know. Next is going to have a, a new kind of passive noise-free cooling system with a mesh on the side to let air in. Camera will, still will be weather sealed. Now, it's not going to have a, a fan like the Panasonic S1H has, so it's going to have a, a passive cooling system. Now, the Canon US R5 and R6, for example, do not have a, a, a fan and they overheat a lot, like crazy. Um, but that's mostly, I think, because of the oversampling, because they're down, they're the, they're, they're 4K with the R5, for example, it's getting down sampled from 8K, so it's gonna ha have a lot of heat. But the R6 also overheats as well, so I don't know. This camera, if it, if it turns out to be only 12 megapixels, that, that means it's going to be a lot easier to disperse the heat because the, the lower the, the resolution, the less heat it builds. So this camera not having a fan, it's probably going to get away with that because like I said, the, the lower resolution is going to have, it's going to allow it to not have the, the same uh, overheating limitations of the Canons, for example, and the Panasonic S1H. So I don't think this camera is going to really be uh, overheating that much, at least not as much as the Canons. Their newest Sony cameras uh, overheat, like the 6000 series, the newer ones, and the A7R4 and stuff. People, uh, they, even though they, even though they, the Sony has said that they fixed the overheating issues, many people have complained that those cameras still overheat. So let's hope these cameras do not overheat. But that is is uh, is here fo is here uh, emphasized further with this next statement. So it's not gonna have no overheating. So again, uh, no overheating. They're saying right here. So. Let's really hope it doesn't overheat, so it's not like the nightmares that are the Canon R5 and R6. And best of all, but this was a kind of expected, I already knew this was going to happen. No recording time limit. So, as some of you might know now, the newest Sony cameras, uh, like the 6400, the 6600, and so on and so forth, are starting to come out with only limited recording because the European tax law that was uh, that was active has, has already expired. It expired back in, in July 2019 last year, so. There's no longer a tax for the for video cameras which uh, record more than 30 minutes. This is why I've complained in my previous video about the Canons having a recording limit because, like I said, the European tax law has already expired. That, this is why the Sony's now are starting are starting to come out with only recording. So this is going to be pretty great. I've already said many times that I, I really require a camera with only recording because I tend to film a lot of 
cosplay contests and concerts and stuff like that, interviews and stuff like that, sessions which, which require over half an hour of recording and I, it really sucks having to, to push the button and on the camera like for example when, I, when I'm recording some concerts for example I have to stay close to the camera to, to check the recording time and see if I have to, to press the button or not this way I can just I can just leave the camera on a tripod and sit back and enjoy the show for example so this is gonna be pretty awesome so props for, for Sony for doing this Canon really sucks that they limited the recording time so yeah only we're recording pretty big plus Sony next you're gonna have UHS 2 card support okay it's gonna have dual, dual uh, card slot of course UHS 2 all right not gonna have CF Express but then again there's no, there's no need for CF Express like the Canon R5 because this camera is not it's not gonna film in 8k so there's no need for those super fast expensive cards so there's no no problem in that uh, so for the body design it's look it's if they're saying here it's, it's gonna look similar to the E7R4 design so they're not gonna change much the body style then I guess it's, if it's supposed to be similar to the E7R4 um, I have I have held the E7R4 I really like I write I like the, the ergonomics they're not as good as Canon and Nikon and Panasonic of course but then again they fit my hands pretty nice and they're, they're pretty decent so the grip they have expanded the grip with the E7R4 now they might do they might make this camera a little bit thicker so they think like here that's gonna look similar that does not mean it's gonna be the same so it might look similar but they're probably gonna gonna have the body a little bit thicker because of the 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 passing system the passive cooling system so the camera does not overheat let's hope so because these cameras are notorious for overheating the the sony cameras because of the small design in the body so let's hope it's a little bit thicker so it does not overheat next this is this is a pretty big huge one and a, a really a wish that many people have had for many years now it's gonna have a fully articulating screen like the one used on the sony zv1 so now if this is true sony is gonna have is gonna be selling a lot of these cameras because people have requested sony to release a, a camera with an articulating screen like a like the Canons and the Panasonic for a lot of time now. They have the best autofocus system, so they really will benefit with a fully articulating screen. So the Sony ZV-1 uses the, the articulating flip-out screen like the, the Panasonic's have, like the Canons and the, and the Fujifilm X-T4, for example. So it's not gonna flip up like the, the 6000 series, it's gonna flip out. So it's gonna be pretty awesome for the vlogging like and the YouTubing videos like this, like I'm doing right now. It's, it's really awesome, it's pretty, pretty huge. I don't. I, I really hate when people say that they they don't like the articulating screen because it's only for vloggers. I have said many times now that the articulating screen is not is not only useful for vlogging. It's also it's also very nice for photography, for macro shots, for example. You can get a lot of uh, hard hard um, to reach angles, for example. You can you can you can tilt the screen still. You only have to flip it out. You can also uh, close the screen to protect it. So there's a lot of advantages with this type of screen. Now. Ideally, I would like the, the Panasonic S1 H screen because that one is the best. But even though it's not gonna have be that screen, if it's supposed to be like the Sony ZV-1, that's gonna be awesome. Because like I said, Sony have the best autofocus system, so having an, an articulating screen on the Sony's really is helpful because like I said, they have the best autofocus, so being able to see to see yourself and frame yourself with that awesome autofocus, it's gonna be pretty huge. And again, like I said, it's also useful for photography. So let's really hope this camera finally has a flip out screen. And let's hope all the future all the future cameras by Sony have this screen as well. So the announcement is gonna be on late July, so it's already confirmed 28th of July, like they were rumored, like they were the rumors. It's gonna it, it was supposed to be announced on the, the, the end of July. Really, Sony was just waiting for the R5 and R6, I guess, to announce these cameras. So they were just waiting for the specs of the Canon US R5 and R6 and to, to then drop the bomb, if it really is a bomb, I hope this camera is a bomb it's shaping up to be a, a really nice contender to the Panasonic S1H so let's hope for the best and the shipments will start on mid-August so those were the specs and I have also uh, voted right here so yeah I have said yes uh, I, I'm really, I really am looking forward to this camera if, this, if all these specs are, are true this is going to be a phenomenal camera but it's going to be very expensive most likely, it's going to be over $3,000 of course just like the A7S2 and the A7S1 were when they, when they launched I don't think it's going to be $4,000 like the Panasonic S1H or the, 
almost four thousand dollars like the r5 it's gonna be probably thirty five hundred dollars i don't know being that there's being that there's gonna be so much new new stuff on this camera it's probably it's most it's probably gonna be a little bit more expensive than, than the a7s2 which i believe was 3300 when it launched so i see this camera being 3500 to 3600 so probably the same price as, as the canon us r5 so yeah um but like i was saying i mean this camera is shaping up to be really great this has been a camera that has been long, very long in the tooth. People have been waiting for this for over five years now. I think, I still believe Sony should have released this camera uh, either in 2018 or last year. I think now it's a little bit too late for this camera because they have already said that they won't exceed expectations. And even though they have a lot of good specs right here, still, I don't think they're gonna exceed the expectations because some cameras are, are already shooting in 14 bit RAW, for example, like the Black Magic and the Z cams. Those cameras are really are really becoming the um, the new budget values, the new uh, the new uh, value for the money cameras. Z cam especially is coming up with a lot of great cameras. With uh, they have a, they they also have a six K and eight K full frame cameras, for example. So let's hope this camera really delivers. The flip out screen is really going to be awesome if it's true. Sixteen bit raw that's going to be huge. Let's hope that's also true as well. Uh, the the recording the recordings now it's not gonna have 8 bit 8 8k should I say it's not gonna have 8k of course it's gonna be a low light they're targeting this camera for low light so it's if it's gonna be they want they want it's gonna be a low light monster they want to have the best 4k quality available and also being 12 megapixels that's gonna that's gonna, that means it's gonna have a, a lot of good quality 1080p which is what I want I know the A7S2 for example has, has great 1080p quality because of the low resolution so. For those people like me who do, who do a lot of uh, shooting in 1080p, it's going to be huge because the 1080p is going to be awesome. And of course, the file sizes are, the file sizes are not going to be as, as huge as the 4K files, for example. But this camera is it mostly, it's mostly going to be for 4K, of course, for 4K production. So yeah, really, really looking forward to this camera. I'm not going to buy it, of course, because it's going to be too expensive for me. And it's, it's going to have a lot of things that I don't really need. But I, I really hope this tech and this video specs go down to the the a7 IV, which is the camera i'm really looking forward to which is which is most likely going to be announced near the end of the, the the year so let's hope these specs trickle down to that camera and all the future sony cameras as well so yeah guys the that this these are pretty much the a7s3 specs the rumor specs for now really shaping up to be a great camera we're still gonna, we're gonna have to wait still some days for the 28th of july but i'm telling you the internet's gonna lose their minds this, this, is, this is either going to be the best camera release of the year or the most disappointing release of the year. I don't know. Let's hope for the best. So, yeah, Sony A7S 3 finally it's happening after so many time. So, let's hope for the best. Thank you guys for watching the video. If you like my work and lots, if you like my work and want to support me, you can hit the subscribe button. Visit my channel if you want to see more camera works as well. I will do some more uh, camera related videos in the future as well. I will do a follow uh, after I finish this video. I will do one for the A7 IV as well. I also have some videos to do about Panasonic GH6. I also want to do a video about that. But uh, yeah, again, uh, thank you for watching the video. If you like my work, support and what support me, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell to stay up to date when I release new content. And I'll see you guys in the next video on Holy Mega. Signing out. Stay safe and keep shooting.